Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith, I'm here with my cat Casper. He's hanging out, taking a nap, and today's video we're going to be talking about EEG filters. Now I just wanted to go over a basic overview of what filters are and what they do on the EEG. I even pulled up my own EEG here, I made my own montages and everything, got some raw EEG signals, but the filter settings on this little program don't work out too well, so uh, I found some pictures off of Google, at least for one of the filters, and I think I can just explain it using my words. So the EEG filters, most of the time, uh, you want to filter out uh, frequencies on the EEG that are not brain activity. Because on the EEG, what do you really want to see? You want to see the patient's brain activity. That's the whole reason why we're doing this. What frequency ranges can brain activity occur in? Well, usually between 1 and 70 hertz. That's why we filter out activity that is below 1 hertz, and we filter out activity that is above 70 hertz. So that's why the standard settings for EEG filters are a low frequency filter of 1 hertz, so you're filtering out activity that is below 1 hertz, and the more below 1 hertz it is, the more it gets filtered out. It's called like a frequency response curve. That's a little more detailed, but just think of it as filtering out anything below one hertz. Now, you also have the high frequency filter that is usually set at 70, which filters out activity on the EEG that is above 70 hertz. So the more above 70 hertz it is, the more it's going to get filtered out. So if you have some uh, activity that's like 170 hertz that's really fast pretty much just going to be like black on the screen it's going to get filtered out automatically by the uh high frequency filter now if it's only like 76 hertz and the filter set at 70 hertz is going to filter it out a lot less than if it was like 150 hertz that's that, that's where the frequency response curve thing comes into play uh but pretty much just a way to think of it as the way the filters are set between 1 and 70 hertz, that's where your actual brain activity is going to be, and you're going to want to filter out anything under 1 hertz and everything over 70 hertz. So that's just the basics of the low frequency filter and the high frequency filter. We also have electrical interference that comes from, you know, beds being plugged in, different medical equipment. You'll be seeing this a lot in the ICU. Uh, you're going to see 60 hertz interference on your EEG. Now I have a picture of this I'm showing in a few of these channels it looks almost like black. That's the 60 hertz. Now if you put on the 60 hertz or notch filter as it's sometimes called it will erase this uh, artifact completely and you'll be able to clearly see the EEG. So that's another very helpful filter that I use pretty much on almost every EEG. It would be better if you didn't have to use it. A way to reduce 60 hertz artifact is to have very low and equal impedances so when you're checking the impedances on your electrodes while you're placing the electrodes you're going to want to have them under 5000 ohms so they're all low and equal that will reduce your 60 hertz interference and sometimes you can try unplugging the bed um don't unplug things in the icu like ventilators and stuff don't be doing that now guys but if it's like a routine outpatient you could try unplugging the bed stuff like that to try and reduce the electrical interference but usually just slap on the 60 hertz notch filter and you'll be fine i i use it on almost every eeg now there is a last type of filter which i created which is called an artifact filter so sometimes on the EEG, you're going to have different artifacts that are going to be covering up the EEG and they're going to be blocking what you want to see. Now, what I made is an artifact filter that can filter out. I, we can filter out eye blink artifacts. We can filter out electrode pop artifacts. We can filter out uh, muscle artifact. Now, for example, I want to show a muscle artifact EEG where our filter filters out the muscle artifact. Now, let me pull it up here on my computer. I'm going into the code where I created my muscle artifact reduction filter. Now, let's see just the first uh, basic EEG before filtering anything out. Let's look at it and see what it shows. We can see that we have muscle artifact most prominent in the T4 area and T3 area. So both on the sides of the head, you're going to be seeing 
muscle artifact that could be coming just from a clenched jaw. Now, usually this is no problem, but if the patient is having a, uh, a partial seizure, if they have focal epilepsy disorder and their medications aren't working, the doctor wants to find out exactly where in the brain the seizure starts. And in over 90% of these seizures, you're gonna see muscle activity and it can obscure the brain activity, which makes it hard for the doctor to see where the seizure starts. So we can actually take this muscle activity and filter it out. Now you might be thinking at first, well, Jared, why don't you just use a high frequency filter? Well, if you use a high frequency filter, because yes, muscle activity is very high frequency, you're gonna filter out the muscle activity, but you're also gonna filter out actual brain activity, which we don't wanna do. So in order to do that, we use our special muscle artifact reduction filter right here. Now, let me edit the code real quick and we will see what it looks like. Okay, so now we have our artifact reduced EEG. We have our old EEG plotted right on top of our artifact reduced EEG. So the EEG we looked at before, this gray stuff is the muscle artifact that was filtered out. And now you can see the EEG is much more clear without the muscle artifact. Now, I'm looking for different ways to test this new filter that I've created. So I'm looking for examples of focal seizures where they're contaminated with muscle artifact. So we can see if this filter can filter out the muscle artifact and make the epileptic activity very clear. So I'm looking for different files of partial seizures so I can test this muscle artifact removal feature. It's just in the testing phase, so you can't use it on any patients, guys. Don't use it on any patients. Don't um, don't give me any patient identification information. It's like That's a, like a big HIPAA violation. I'm sure all you guys know about that. So if you guys could send me any EEG you have, you want me to show the muscle artifact removed, hopefully partial seizures uh, where they have muscle artifact and you're looking for the seizure onset zone, that would be the best case scenario. So just email me at jared at aionEEG.com. That's how you spell it. So this is our ion artifact removal filter. So we're just in the testing stages. We're just looking for feedback and I want people to send me examples of EEG so I can test it on it and I'll send you back the EEG with the muscle artifact remove. I just need you guys' help with these, giving me a couple files to test it on, because I have to test it on different files. I have to I have to try and break it, you know? Before I can get it FDA approved, I have to test it and make sure it works under every circumstance. It's getting really good, guys. I just need your help to send me files and I'll test it on it and I'll send it back to you personally. I'm giving you guys my personal email, so just feel free to reach out to me on email jared at ioneeg.com, aioneeg.com. That's how you spell it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my quick little overview on filters. You got the high frequency filter, we got the low frequency filter, we got the notch filter, and we also got the ion artifact removal filter. So thank you all for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about filters. If you're new to EEG, if you're not new to EEG, I hope you had fun hanging out with me and if you have any partial seizures that you want me to remove the muscle artifact from just to help me with my testing, I'd greatly appreciate that. Just email me, jared at ioneeg.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, comment down below. What else would you guys like to see from me? I'm the EEG video making guy, me and my cat Casper. I mean, he's a little bit lazy. He's been sleeping all day, but he's here to support me as well. I appreciate you guys' support and I'll see you all on the next video.